Howdy everyone, today we're going to be performing a little oil change action on my 2019 Tacoma with the 3.5 liter 6 cylinder engine. It's a relatively straightforward procedure, however it will require some tools that you may not have lying around. Let's take a look at what we'll need. In the absolutely necessary column, we've got a funnel, a compatible replacement filter, a new crush washer, a 64 millimeter oil filter wrench, a 3 8 ratchet with 3 to 5 inch extension 12 and 14 millimeter sockets, an oil drain pan, and approximately 6.2 quarts of 0W20 oil which I forgot to put in this frame. In the life will be easier column, we've got a 3 8 torque wrench and a Toyota specific oil filter drain valve. Two notes on these tools. First is the necessity of a new crush washer. I'm the first to admit that I've performed oil changes on other vehicles and reused the old one, but Toyota uses a type that's made of a thin rubber bonded to aluminum. It really tends to get chewed up during removal, so replacement is almost certainly going to be required. Second, I believe any generic 64mm oil filter wrench will work, but I'm using one specifically made for Toyota and Lexus vehicles. That's why it looks a bit different. It's got some extra reliefs built in to make sure it can fully grasp the housing, and it was pretty inexpensive on its own. I'll place a link to everything below. There'll be associate links for which the channel will earn a small commission. Use is greatly appreciated. First thing I'll do is run the truck up on some ramps. I didn't include these in the necessary tools because, honestly, the Tacoma has so much ground clearance up front that you might actually be able to get to everything without lifting it at all. But for me, it's a habit. Once underneath the truck, and I need to apologize for a few of these shots, the LED light I was using was not getting along with my camera, and I had to do some weird editing to mitigate the flickering that was occurring so I wouldn't inadvertently trigger an epileptic seizure in someone. Anyway, we first need to get our oil drain pan in place. I really, really like this one I bought from Garage Boss uh, because it's got an extension on the funnel that allows me to get right up and close to the drain plug. With this, I basically eliminate any spillage. The plug itself is located in this little triangle shaped cutout in one of the skid plates. You'll now need your 14 millimeter socket. Go ahead and remove and let drain for a few minutes. Next up, we need to drop the front skid plate in order to access the oil filter housing. It's retained by four bolts that can be removed with our 12 millimeter socket. And here is what needs to get worked on next. The first of this multi-step process involves the removal of what I can only describe as a dust and debris cap. Here we'll need our ratchet and extension, no socket yet. This will reveal threads in which we can insert our Toyota oil filter drain valve. Now remember earlier when I said this tool was a luxury, not an absolute necessity? Here's why. If you purchase an OEM replacement filter, it will come with this little plastic device. It's meant to snap into the filter housing, depress the internal valve, and drain the filter, negating the need for the aftermarket valve and tubing at the expense of making a mess. I'm not sure if third-party oil filters contain this little tool or not, so either spend the 15-ish dollars on what I've got here, or double-check that your non-Toyota filter includes one. In either case, insert what you've got into the hole, and if you've got what I've got here, open the valve and let the oil inside the filter drain into your pan. After a minute or two, when the line is once again clear, go ahead and remove the valve. It's now time for our socket, extension, and 64mm oil wrench. As you can see here, whoever tightened the filter cover last time really torqued it down. I had to use a cheater bar to break it loose. It really shouldn't be this tight. When you finally do get it removed, I like to take it to a workbench to clean up and reassemble. Just easier than working under a car. Putting everything back together is pretty self-explanatory here. We've got two O-rings and a cartridge. The smaller O-ring goes under the dust cap while the larger one goes over the main threads. 
Be careful you place the larger o-ring in the correct groove. There are a couple, but luckily if you lose track of which one you remove the old one from, there's a little diagram on the new filter box to guide your journey. Other than that, the new cartridge snaps into the assembly with a reassuring click. When reinstalling the assembly, I'll first use my ratchet to get it relatively snug. If you want, you could probably get it good and tight and call it good enough, but I'm going to use my torque wrench to set it to OEM specs. That would be 9.5 foot-pounds of torque on the dust cap and 18.5 for the main assembly. Which is honestly not a ton, one reason I was so surprised it took a cheater bar to remove in the first place. After that, assuming you've already reinstalled your drain plug, go ahead and reinstall your front skid plate and pat yourself on the back because you're almost done and the hard parts are over. Of course, before starting the engine and backing down the ramps, we'll need to replace the oil we removed. The Tacoma requires 6.2 quarts of 0W20. I'm using Castrol GTX Magnatech because it was the cheapest full synthetic on Amazon. I'm of the opinion that all oil available from reputable manufacturers in the US is good enough, so I go by price. In any case, the recommended volume turned out to be perfect per a dipstick reading, so now there's only one thing left to do, and luckily, Toyota makes it really easy, resetting the maintenance reminder. To do so, simply navigate to the settings menu on the center display, scroll down to maintenance reset, click yes, and you're done. Okay, that's all I had for today. Hopefully that should get any Wayward Weekend Warrior mechanics on their way to a successful Toyota Tacoma oil change. Take care.